welcome back, everybody. Nice to see you. Um, I think we've got a fairly short agenda this time. I don't have the minutes from uh, last month, so we're going to kick that to the next meeting and we'll review the minutes next time. So we're going to skip that part of the agenda. Um, I have a couple of quick announcements, but not very much. So I will uh, welcome anything that you guys want to contribute. A um, couple of things were posted on the Radnor website this month. Uh, that might be of interest. There was a report on uh, the North Wayne Field Basin presentation with respect to stormwater management. Um, and there's also a township-wide stormwater study. The stormwater study is like 600 pages, I think. It's a really big report. Uh, got a lot of detail, and I think a lot of people would be interested to review that. Uh, there was also a report posted on the limited asphalt and soil quality investigation at the Villanova parking lot, which we've discussed a couple of times. Um, a lot of data in there on what they found. There were a couple of things that had elevated levels. I think there was a little bit of lead, uh, but not elevated beyond normal levels for non-residential. Um, I don't know if folks want to look at that, but that's, uh, that's out there. Um, the Pennsylvania Environmental Council is doing an interesting bicycle ride. It's an environmental ride, June 2nd to June 4th. They're starting up in Levittown, and they're going to ride down to the Fairmount Waterworks Museum. Um, yeah, it is a long way. Um, and it's basically a fundraiser for environmental stuff. So that's about it for me. Anybody else have announcements? Do we want to comment? Do we want to comment about um, Sally's uh, article about? Um, yeah. Do you, do you remember the details on that? Not that I could recite at length, but basically it was about meadowization mm -hmm. as a way to um, sequester carbon, that it had collateral benefits beyond not just running a mower to cut it as a lawn. And it made me, uh, for me, it also made me think about the green team, and I don't recall every part of the green team original approach. But when I looked up uh, trees as a method of sequestering carbon, and I'm sure everybody here knows this, but as a refresher for anybody else, uh, half the weight of a tree is carbon. And I didn't know that. That's yeah, cool. Well, that's according to USDA or US FDA forestry thing. Um, and you know, obviously it's decades of carbon. And right now trees pull 10% of the carbon that is generated in the United States out of the air, the forest. I'm sure that corn crops take some carbon, and but you know they're already turning back into carbon when they're comp composted or we eat them and things like that. But um, a really effective thing one might be figuring out if there's ways to double up the tree lines around township property buildings. And, and, you know, it, it lasts for decades. And curiously, also, the carbon uptake is the strongest at the beginning of the cycle. So right now, when we need more carbon out, young trees pull carbon out faster than old trees. So it's just um, food, carbon for thought. That's really cool stuff. And, and I think part of the thrust of the article, too, um, tell me if I'm wrong, is they're, they're kind of looking at this from a research point of view. They don't actually know everything there is to know about the dynamics of kind of the carbon uptake cycle. And having uh, meadows apparently changes the soil composition and changes the, the ability of the soil to absorb the, the carbon and then, you know, sort of the speed at which it recycles back into the atmosphere. Well, the other interesting thing, and you just helped me recall it, um, the root systems of trees um, take up twice as much or lock up twice as much carbon in the soil as in the tree itself. I didn't know that. Over the life cycle of the tree. Learn something. Thank you. <coughs> Any other announcements? Okay. Um, we'll talk about work group reports. And uh, I don't know that we have anything new to report. Sustainable parks, I don't think there's anything going on. Josh, did you have something to say? <clears throat> uh, no, not for sustainable parks. I was going to mention something about this. Okay, uh, so we'll go on to the Sustainable Pennsylvania Community Certification. Yeah, I, I just wanted I to... Sloan's been working on that a little bit. And I want to thank Sloan for continuing to work on this this past month. Yep. Um, he's been great. He he got it on a, on a telephone call with Bob Zinkowski uh, regarding our uh, failed efforts to find somebody to take this on in-house. And Bob Z was very enthusiastic about the whole process. And 
um, he, uh, he believed that he could find somebody in-house to, to get it done. And he made it sound like it was going to be a, a you know, quick thing. And we, we explained that we thought that you know, they had a gold, gold uh, medal lined right up, you know, mm -hmm. right up the bat, and that we would be here to help them get to the next level. Uh, so Bob was, was thankful and uh, seemed enthusiastic. So uh, um, that, was about, uh, that was about two weeks ago. So I haven't heard yet what, who that person might be uh, that in-house in that is going to take on the uh, application process. But uh, that'll be the next follow-up call. Okay. Thanks very much, Josh. Yep. Good stuff. Um, moving on to community environmental education. I've got an update on the stream science grant that we got from the DEP. Um, I spent a little bit of time uh, working with the school district and with the parent-teacher organizations at the elementary schools to kind of socialize the idea of doing this now that we know that we're getting the money. Um, we spoke to the, the superintendent and the assistant superintendent and got their verbal approval for the project. So the next step is going to be to really get the club started at the elementary school levels. And, and Jim has been very helpful in this. And I know Beth's been on those communications as well. So thank you for your efforts to kind of get the word out. Um, I think uh, the next step is there's a budget and a timeline due tomorrow and I've got those almost ready to go those will go in made a few adjustments to the budget um, kind of looking at what kind of equipment we need and things like that but I think we're going to be in good shape we really just need to um, keep working with the PTOs to get the the clubs off the ground I know that's been a little bit slow going end of the school year everybody's busy with other activities so uh, I'll, I'll uh, lean on you guys a little bit to help me with communication if you don't mind and uh, we'll get it moving forward Questions about that? What was the total grant? Total grant is $3,000. And we've budgeted for things like um, educational water quality testing kits. There are these little, um, little kind of fabric cases that come with chemicals and little test strips that you can test for pH and nitrogen and phosphorus and temperature and things like that. Um, we've got budgeted for um, hip waders to go into the streams kick nets so we can catch uh, little macro invertebrates, scrub the rocks and get the, get the stuff to flow downstream into the net. And then we can look at the, uh, look at the bugs under microscopes. We've got a, a few microscopes in there as well. Be able to do some insect identification and uh, um, you know, a couple little things, stopwatches and thermometers and things like that to, to test stream velocity and temperature. So it's gonna be kind of cool. Where so I know Wayne Elementary, and we're going to do the Little Darby Creek right there. I haven't looked yet at Ithan and Radnor Elementary. We're going to try to find some places nearby. And Jim, I don't know if you, you have ideas yeah. about that. Ithan Valley Park is right near Ithan Elementary. It's a little bit, I'm not sure if it's walkable. There might be a trail down there, but it's a, a great accessible stream with parking. So I think that'd be an easy fit for it. Perfect. Yep. So, so one of our milestones for the grant will be to kind of sit down and look at a map and figure out exactly where we're going to do some testing and then, you know, sort of set up a schedule to, to visit once a month or something like that. Um, the, the Ithan PTO and principal was, were wondering what this program kind of looks like. Have you worked that out with any of the elementary school, other, with the other PTO groups? Like, do you know what kind of club it would be and what you're going to expect from the elementary school kids? We've talked about it a little bit informally, but we haven't sketched out the full structure of it. My thought was it would be a standard sort of 3.30 afternoon club. Um, I'll run the one at Wayne and we'll look for volunteers to, to do the ones at the other schools. Um, get the kids together maybe once every other week or something like that through the winter. Um, we'll have to do a little bit of education on what water quality is about, how it works, how you test it, why it's important, things like that. Do a little bit of work on, on how to identify bugs and how to use the equipment. Um, and then we'll try to get kids out as soon as possible and do some field work. Because I think, to me, one of the really big benefits of this is just getting kids in the outdoors and getting them to understand sort of the context of all this. Um, so other than that, I don't have a, a lot in the way of structure, and sure. I'd love to talk through that with folks but, that are interested. But that's helpful, though, just knowing what yep. they could expect in terms of what 
you know, when the club would meet, with the yep. fact that it's going to be a club as opposed to part of a curriculum, because that's one of the questions yep. I got. Yeah, I think that's an important one. And do you know the, the clubs with elementary schools, do you need a faculty uh, leader or can it be a parent or a PTO person? I believe it can be a parent, and I'm, I'm looking for input on this from the folks that I've talked to. Josh, you're nodding your head. Um, my understanding is as long as the PTO puts it on a list of approved clubs for the fall, the, the school board will essentially sign off on it. You've got to get your clearances for the parents that are going to help out, obviously. Um, so there's some administrative requirements, but I don't, I don't think there's anything beyond that. Uh, no, I've, done a, I've ran a few clubs uh, after school, stuff like that, and um, it was quite easy. I, I was approved okay. through the PTO, obviously, and, uh, and there was no faculty members there. And, okay. Yeah, it was pretty easy. Perfect. So, Great. yeah, we just need to kind of get going in earnest and um, start putting it together. Well, you just gave me a thought. Um, in the context of the Villanova parking testing, there is a stream there. It's not easily accessible by an elementary school after class, but maybe just one test kind of. Yep. And there's no reason trip, we could, yeah, we trip. couldn't get, um, no reason we couldn't get some folks out there on an informal basis. We don't have like bus money and, you know, transportation and stuff like that. But I think just to do local things around the area, it shouldn't be hard mm -hmm. to carpool. Thank you. Um, any other community education awareness kinds of things? The, uh, the tree giveaway was this past uh, month since our last meeting, I believe, yeah. right? Yeah. I, I did get two trees from my yard for the first time. That was pretty nice. They come. They're about six to eight feet tall, you know, maybe an inch and a half caliper. Yeah, so they were, they were nice-sized trees. They were um, decent-looking trees, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got a black gum and some, some sort of a, a sugar maple, I believe. But um, that reminded me, your, your discussion about uh, carbon sequestration reminded me that in the greenhouse gas action plan that we, pr we put together for the township, um, increased tree planting was one of our recommendations. And uh, though we as the EAC have never um, actively pushed the township to, to do anything about it, they, they've been doing it on their own uh, through other programs. Maybe it's uh, that Shade Tree USA program or maybe you might be able to speak to this, Skip, but I just well, want to say that there was a ton of trees that were out there, a couple hundred, I think. Right? Well, there, there's that one contractor who got penalized $60,000 and added to the fund. Not to name any names, so, you know. But th that certainly enhanced the budget quite a bit. Ah, okay. Uh, anyway, so um, it would probably be, it would be smart of us to approach uh, Shade Tree um, or maybe the public uh, public works, whoever whoever has the most knowledge about these Steve, plantings. Steve Norsini, probably. Yeah, and get historical records over the past five years or so since the last time we found out about how many trees have been planted through township programs, even if they are on, on residential properties, hmm. because the it was the township's uh, initiative, whether it might have been even the township's funds that paid for those trees. We should find out how many exactly each year, and that way we can, when it comes time to do another assessment of, uh, um, say, a carbon footprint, uh, you know, calculation, we'd be able to apply those uh, sequestration uh, savings uh, to to that calculation, and we don't we don't want that we don't want to lose the data while it's still while it's still here. I think the other fund source is the uh, ordinance that uh, requires. Developers, like I know in the residential setting, it's four or more units. You have to either do a fee in lieu or dedicate some of the property as, you know, public space or park space. And really small developments, the township doesn't want, you know, a 10 by 10 square of dirt. So the fees, that ought to be generating something. That, and that's not dedicated to trees per se, but, you know, the parks could use a stray tree or two, too. Remind me, have we ever done a tree census in Radnor Township? The closest I can recall to, uh, of something of that nature was a macro uh, uh, data um, analysis. I think it was via satellite or via uh, or, or through the airplane um, analysis of, of the of this area. I think at, at least we saw I, I think we saw Delaware County uh, kind of. Um, 
all the different types of land use shows up in, as different colors on it. And it could tell uh, old shade canopy. Mm -hmm. it, could, it, could, it could differentiate between old shade canopy, um, uh, new forest, shrubs, grass, asphalt, roof, field, turf, that kind That's of stuff. And interesting, okay. And I don't, you know, obviously they didn't give, they didn't give a number of how many trees there mm -hmm. were, they, but it was, they give you a percentage of the township. And maybe that's of, enough just yeah. to get a sense of, I know one of the issues that, that kind of comes up is sort of change over time. If you look at where the township is now versus where they were 10 years ago, 20 years ago, uh, the tree, tree presence and the tree cover can really change dramatically, right? Yeah. So something to keep an eye on. I don't know how feasible a tree census is, but it would be terrific. The other thing, this is sort of an indirect liaison report because I'm, I'm not on Shade Tree anymore, but my brother-in-law is. I know that they're about to rewrite or revise the Shade Tree Ordinance. So it'd be an interesting plug-in like the U.S. Constitution to say that every five or every 10 years, maybe there's a heritage tree um, survey. That's kind of cool. Where you ask uh, residents to, you know, yep. reply and factor in a certain amount of uh, non-reply, but get a sense of it. Well, and there, there are also some um, pretty easy to use iPhone apps and things like that, where you can go out and identify the tree and put the map coordinates in. And there's a, there's actually a, um, I think we talked about this a couple of years ago. There's a um, sort of a data sharing uh, tool that some of the municipalities around us, not Radnor, but some of the other ones have used to, to kind of use those apps to map their trees. Um, so that's something we could look into. Well, no, from a privacy from a standpoint, sourcing. you know, somebody who has two acres probably doesn't want you to walk around and take your app to their fair tree. Enough. Yeah, fair enough. But an interesting baseline still for the township might be to record trees like that that are in the right away or within 10 feet of the right away oh, yeah. so if you're point. you're standing on a street and that makes it fast and uh, a more manageable database probably mm -hmm. and i can mention it to my brother-in-law as an idea good idea great um Thank you. Any, uh, I guess we don't have liaison reports unless you've got anything, Skip. Planning uh, did not have a meeting on uh, the 1st of, or the 2nd of May or whatever our day was. There was nothing on the agenda, although you wouldn't guess that from all the activity in the township, construction-wise. But at the moment, there was nothing that we had to do, so we didn't. Okay, thanks. Any old business? Uh, yeah, I was going to ask you something. Um, oh, about the, uh, I'm sorry, just briefly back to that uh, stream um, science study. Yep. Did you say through the whole winter? Yeah, we, uh, you know, I know it sounds awful to, to go out in the middle of the winter. We actually went out in January this year, and it wasn't too bad. As long as you kind of bundle up, we were able to get some, some samples of live insects and things like that. Is that... Uh, a, as a fly fisherman, I, I think of uh, aquatic insects, uh, you know, spring or, you know, late mm -hmm. winter, spring, yep. early summer. Uh, so, but a winter is a good time to do a insect survey of a stream? Under, uh, I, do, under I don't know if it's a good time to do that, but I figured we'd give it a try. And, and we'll also be collecting chemical data and temperatures sure. and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I think that'll give a broader perspective on kind of the, the overall life cycle of the stream. Winter's actually great for accessibility. You don't have to worry about all that brush and briars and stuff getting oh, that's in That's a good thought, yeah. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. I don't know. Sure. No old business. Yeah, this is a, it's an interesting process for me. I'm not an expert on this. Jim is. Yeah, I was going to say, actually, the temperature has a lot to do with some of the different parameters you'd measure in the water, so okay. it would be interesting to see it in the winter and then again in the warmer, and then because you just have stuff like uh, dissolved oxygen would probably have yep. be, be largely different, and that'd be an mm -hmm. easy thing to demonstrate to the kids, you know, between one time points and another and yeah. when, why that is. Yeah, see, it was a good idea. I didn't even realize. Thanks. <laughs> Blind squirrel. That's right. Yes. Say again. Put, put an ice saw on your requisition. An ice saw, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, it's a little bit depressing. When, when we went out last winter, there was no barely ice. any ice. You know, it's it really wasn't hard to get in at all. We went over the willows. We went over to uh, Darby Creek, and you know, a couple different places. So. 
Um, any new business? And no public comment, doesn't look like, so this may be a short one tonight. Okay. Well, thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thanks. Hope to have something for you next month. Sounds good. We look forward to it. Meeting adjourned.